Well, that's one way to get ahead. Hey! What's up, my peoples? MGO here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the fans toys, Hannibal! So here we are, and there he is, and first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging right up front here. We have lovely, lovely artwork of Hannibal in both of his modes. On this side we have Hannibal, on this side we have Hannibal. Up top we have Hannibal, on the bottom Hannibal. QR code takes you to video instructions. You don't need that, you got my videos for that. And on the back you have a very lengthy bio. If you want to read it, you can read that on your own time. And obligatory product shots, this, that, the other things and stuff. More QR codes and that's basically it for the packaging. Also included is the collector's card with a nice image there of Hannibal on the back. That same bio in extremely tiny, tiny type. And tech specs if that interests you. Hooray for carts. And moving right along, here we have Hannibal, and this is Fans Toys Take on Cerebros, the headmaster for Fortress Maximus. Yes, they're doing a Fort Max. Crazy, crazy. But yes, here is Cerebros in his robot mode. That's the way he's packed. And uh, yeah, nice looking figure. But let's get in close so we can take a look not at his crotch, but at his noggin. There's the noggin. You can see, nicely done head sculpt. Nice metallic blue there for the eyes. Got some panel line there on the chest. Nice space there for an Autobot symbol sticker, which I will put on there once I'm done with this review. And just a simple of off-white and gray color scheme here. Got some little die-cast clips. Uh, the thighs have die-cast in them. And also the toes have die-cast in them. Yeah, again, very simple. Very uh, cartoony. Keeping it simple with the detailing. At the back. Got a little bit of a backpack going on there, but that is accurate. That's the way it's supposed to be for the Headmaster gimmick. But yeah, all in all... Not too shabby looking, I think it looks quite good. Now, articulation-wise, the head can rotate. Now, one thing to note about the uh, the head rotation here is that the feet do need to be folded up behind the head like that. If you leave them down, they're going to collide with these shoulder pieces. So if you have the feet flipped up, then they will clear that shoulder piece no problem, and you have your full head rotation. You do have a joint that allows him to kind of tilt his head upward, um, if you go down, his head will pop off. That's a whole other thing that I'll talk about a little bit later. But, you got that going on. Arms. Can do a full 360 on a nice ratchet. Outward. On a ratchet joint as well. You have some squeaky bicep rotation. Uh, he does have a double jointed elbow. So you have a nice range of movement there. Um, as far as the wrists. You have wrist rotation, the hands are on a ball joint, so you have rotation, you also can move the hand inward if you need to. You have nice, poseable fingers here, the thumb is on a ball joint at the base, and a hinge there. And each finger is on a hinge at the base, a hinge here, and a hinge here, so you have nice, poseable hands. Um, you do have waist rotation, but this little crotch piece kind of gets in the way, you can bring the waist up, so you can kind of get a little bit more clearance there. It also gives you an ab crunch. Also ratcheted as well. Now, if you move the waist up, you can kind of get these skirt pieces out of the way, so you can get full outward movement there on the legs. Um, if you have this compressed down all the way, then you're only going to get about about that much. So, depending on how you have things working, you can get varying ranges of movements. Legs can go forward, about that far, back. About that far. Yeah, that word showed you that. You got thigh rotation. You have this joint as well. It's for transformation, but hey, it's a thing that moves. If you need it to move, knees. You get 90 degrees. I've been there at the knees. Sometimes this clip can come undone as well, so you can kind of, you know, you can break his leg if you want to. Things you can do if you want to do it. And the feet, they can move up some. They can move down a lot. Um, you do have toe tiltage, and you can also move this piece down if you need it for supporting any posing. Now, as far as accessories go, you do get some weaponry. He does have 
So blaster here, definitely a nice pearlescent finish. I don't know how well that comes off on camera, but it's a nice pearlescent finish. So you got that. You also get his sword, which has some nice metallic red paint on it. it looks very, very nice. So you got that. And of course, he can wield his weapons. And as the typical tab in the slot of the palm method of weapon holding. That just tabs right in, wrap his fingers around it, like so. Now the sword, as you can see here, the tab is off-center. So he can only hold this in his right hand. You can put it in his left hand, but he'd be holding it the opposite way. So, you know, you can do that if you want to. But if he's holding it the right way, he can only hold it in his right hand. That just tabs right in. Wrap his fingers around. There you go. You can pew pew slash slash, pew pew slash slash, and all of that good stuff right there. And he also includes this other hand right here, which is kind of like an angled down sword holding hand. Now this hand was packed separately. This was packed in a little baggie of its own, taped to the box. I guess Fan Toys forgot to put it in the box, so it's up to uh, whoever you're buying it from to make sure they include this with uh, the figure. But yeah, you got that as well. Now you can, if you want to, like undo these two screws, take the hand apart, but you can just pop it off the ball joint, it's not that hard. And then you just pop that on like so, and then you wanna make sure that the tab is facing in, and that just slots right in, there you go. You can get actually a very cool, oops, although it doesn't hold in too well though. But once you get it popped in as well as you can, you can actually get a very cool, and the head's popping off again, and a little issue. You can get a cool, sword pointing pose and I quite like that. I like a good sword pointing pose. And you also get noggin options. So you get a uh, alternate face here. So all you have to do to swap out the face is just pull up on his chin here and just untab this. And you can bring in the new face here and just tab it in, pop his head back on. And now he's all like, ah, ah. Ah. And another thing we get is a base of displayage. It's done in a transclearant orange. Um, you do have weapon storage here, so you can take the gun, and the gun will just slot in right there. The sword you have to collapse, and to do that you just split the blade and bring the halves down, like so, and that will just slot in right there. So nice that you have weapon storage, but we need the sword, so let's take this back out, because you do have this other little bit of gimmickry that we can do. We can bring this piece out, this little arm here, bring that up, take the center ring, bring that up, and then we can take the sword, and it will sit right in here like that. I'm guessing this is referencing something from the cartoon. I have no idea what it is, <laughs> but it's a thing you can do. And then you can have Cerebros uh, drawing the sword from it. That makes for a cool little display. Hey, why not? Dare I say, why not? So let's talk about the Headmaster for the Headmaster for a second. Let's talk about Spike now. If we disengage the head, we can open up his chest here. And when we plug the head on, Boop. His split strength meter does actually work as intended, which is quite cool. Um, now, the issue that a lot of people have been having, and myself included, is that the head does, you know, pop off pretty easily, because there's a pretty stiff spring in here. Now, TM Reviews, I'll post a link to his video in the description uh, down below. TM Reviews did do a tutorial on how to take him apart. So you can take the spring out altogether if you don't care about the split strength meter gimmick. Um, if you don't care about this gimmick, you can take the spring out altogether. Um, me personally, I would recommend probably just snipping off a, a loop or two from the spring just to make it a little shorter, or you can just replace it with a softer spring. That way it won't, you know, projectile his head off and the gimmick will still work, but you can do what you want to do there. But I'll post a link to his video in the description down below if you want to do something about that issue. I mean, I mean, it holds on just fine. I mean, it's not like it just pops off if you're just looking at it, but I mean, you know, like I can, I can still pose them, but if you you just push it forward a little too far, boom, it pops right off. So something you can do about it, totally up to you if you want to do something about it. So there you have that. And now for Gamparasun. 
Here he is with MP44 Optimus Prime. Here he is with the Titans Return Cerebros. And here he is with G1 Cerebros because he's precious. Oh, so precious. So, there you go. So that is basically it for the robot mode. So let's get down to transformation, shall we? Let's. So, first thing we need to do is just uh, boop, <laughs> pop his head off. Let's we'll put that off to the side for now. And we shall commence. First thing we want to do is we want to open up his forearms here, flip the hand in, close it back up, open up the forearm, flip the hand in, close it back up. And you just want to bring the arms out to the side like so. Um, once you've done that, you can bring on down this entire chest panel here, open that all up, then you can disengage the shoulders, bring them out, on that double hinge there, like so. And you can bring them forward and they will interlock right here, like that. You can then bring out this entire waist assembly, rotate it 180, and now we will work on the legs. So, Take the legs, you want to just rotate them out. You can take these side skirt panels here, you can bring them up all the way. Just you can spread out the legs. You have room to operate here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to undo this clip here, open that up, you can then flip this in. You want to then open the leg up like so. This little panel here, you want to flip that in. This section here, you want to bring up and over and then slide it down. You want to take this little heel piece, close that up, and then bring the whole toe in. This section here, you want to bring up and over. It is on a little bit of a slider here, so you want to make sure you have that all the way up so it'll come up and over. Bring this down and then rotate this around like so. And then from here, we're going to just collapse the leg in, close that up. Then you can rotate it another quarter turn. Just kind of angle that out like that. And there you have that side all done. Second verse. Guess what? Just like the first. So open that up, put that in, open, flip in the little panel, bring this up and over, slide it down, close up the heel. Bring in the toe, bring that all the way up and over, bring that down, rotate it around, and then collapse the leg in, close this all up, then just give it that quarter turn, bring that out, and there you have that all done, and that's how you want all that looking. So now, what you want to do with these little skirt pieces here is you want to, it helps if you kind of push them in a little bit just so you have some extra leverage here. So this section here you want to fold down like that. Then you want to bring this down and this will slide into the waist so it sits flush right there. That's how you want that looking. So same thing on the other side. Just bring that down. And sometimes it can be a little hard to work with. Come on. Here. This hinge is pretty tight. There we go. Fold that in like that. And just bring that down and just slide that in. Again, you want that sitting nice and flush with the waist like that. So now you can just kind of kind of bring these legs out like so. And now we can come back to the front here. So what we're gonna do here, it helps if you take this panel here, this section, and just kind of untab it. Then you can raise this section up, which will reveal the face. Then you can come back here and just kind of push this forehead section. Oh, oops, that's new. Just push this forehead section forward. So it's all sitting flush. Come on, of course, because the camera's on, everything wants to fight me, as is always the case. 
Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Again, this works fine any other time. There we go. You know what? Camera's on. Always let's fight when the camera's on. There we go. Push that forward, and there you go. That will lock in place right there. <sighs> Anywho. So now you can take this all waste assembly, and this will just collapse down and forward like so. You can bring this panel up, and you have these two tabs here, which will go into these slots right here in the arms. So just raise that up, plug it in, plug it in, raise that up, plug it in, plug it in, like that. And then you just bring the sides of the head down. You have two connection points here. You have this tab that will go into this slot right here. And then you have this post that will go into that port right there. So you just want to line up the tab first. Tab that in. And then this section here will just oop, push right into place. Just bring that down. And you just line up the tab. Oops. I think that skirt piece moved that skirt piece moved on me. Hold up, let me fix that. Okay, there we go. That little skirt piece just shifted on me so it wasn't sitting flush like it was supposed to, but there we go. Now we have it where it's supposed to go. Lines up and should just have it into place and push it in. Boop. There you go. Get all nice and squozen. And there you have Hannibal, aka Cerebros. In his head mode. Yay. And yes, there is the head for Fortress Maximus. And we're getting close here so we can take a look at that head sculpt. Because that's all there is, is the head sculpt. But yeah, looks quite good. Nice metallic red there for the eyes. You have a nice pearlescent finish here on the face. Don't know how well it's coming up on camera, but it looks really good in hand. But all in all, nicely done. Nice big blocky Fort Max head. It all comes together quite well. Nice and solid. And you can also attach the sword to the head mode here. Again, just uh, split the blade, bring the sides down, and you're going to take the handle and that will compress in like so. And you're going to use this little port right here that just plugs in like so, and that I guess is going to be the way it connects to the rest of the body, or I don't know if this is going to incorporate into the big sword for Fort Max. Not sure, won't know until that uh, all that comes out, but yeah, thing you can do. If you want to do it, you can leave a uh, spike attached. You do have to have his feet, uh, you know, basically in, in robot mode here with the feet down and facing forward as they should be. Um, if you leave the feet back, there's not enough clearance, but if you have those feet down, you can totally... Leave the headmaster in also. They again do what you want, things you can do if you want to do it, or you can bring in the base, bring in this section here, just bring that up, and you can just sit the head there on the base and have that going on again. Display options, options good, you know how it works. So let's get back to little spike here because we can transform the headmaster for the headmaster. So do that. You just untab the legs from his shoulders, bring them down, like so. And of course you want to bring his feet down and rotate them around. Bring the foot down, rotate that around. And then you just untab his arms there from the backpack, like so. And then for the face, you're going to just Angle this out and rotate it 180. Just collapse that back in. That hides the face away. Hey, I'll take it. And there you go. There you have Spike. He's a nice looking little headmaster. We're just getting close here so we can take a look at him. Again, nice little head sculpt there. The eyes are painted. He's got his abs because he does not skip core day. No, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. But overall, a nice looking sculpt there. Not too shabby articulation wise. The head is on a ball joint, so you have that wiggly waggly. Um, arms are on a ball joint, can rotate, but the, uh, the backpack piece kind of gets in the way there. You can get decent range of movement, outward movement, elbow joints, uh, nothing at the waist, legs. Or on some stiff ball joints, but can move forward that far. Uh, 
around, back about that far outward. That's all you're getting. No thigh rotation. Knees 90 degrees and feet are on the ball joint up down. You get your wiggly waggly rotation and all of that stuff. And for a comparison, here it is with the Titans Return Spike and with G1 Spike because he's precious. Oh, so precious. Now we do also get some gimmicks and noggin options for Fort Max's head. Um, first thing is a light up feature. Uh, we can push on his chin. That is the switch, his chin. And his eyes will glow a nice bright red. Those nice bright LEDs. Looks like he's following you. Look at that. Ooh, he's watching you. He's watching you. He's giving you the side eye. Oh, that's just, that's just creepy. That's just creepy. But you see that? <laughs> Turn it off. The battery compartment is right behind the faceplate. It takes a uh, one CR1220 battery, which is not included. You'll have to get that yourself. But you can get those cheap on Amazon. But yeah, get a nice little light up feature. But you do also get some optional parts. So if you don't want them looking all serious, well, guess what? You know what you can do? You can just uh, pop his face off here. And here you can see where the battery goes. And you can plug this on. And now he's all like, ah! Ah, uh, uh. things you can do if you want to do it. You can still turn the lights on. Yay, and still watch you back. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And some other noggin options you get are these right here. So if you don't like these smooth horns and, uh, you know, cheek sections here, you get some more detailed, more G1 toy versions. If that suits you, and to swap this stuff out, I'll just swap out one side here, just so you can uh, see what it looks like. But basically, you just have to disengage all of this here. Just kind of bring that out. And then you can just kind of open this up. And you can kind of get all this out. Now this piece is just tabbed in, so you can just pop that off and up new one on. Just line up those tabs and slots. Right there, like so. Now, as far as the horn piece right here, rotate this around. And you can see that it's just a little friction clip right here. So you can just grab it and just pop it out. Just be careful. Ugh. Pop that out. And then, do I have the right side? I think I have the right side. <laughs> and just pop the new one on, like so. Turn that around. And there you go. You can just close all this back up. I'm not doing this most elegant way, so yeah, you know, do this a little bit more elegantly than I am, but just to give you the idea here. Just tab it all back together. Like so. And there you can see how that looks. So hey, you have the option, and as always, options are what? You know what they are. They're good. Then, for comparison, uh, here he is with the Titans Return Fort Max head. I have uh, Toy Hack stickers on mine. And here he is with G1 Fort Max's head because it's precious! Oh, precious decapitation. So there you go! So there you have Hannibal, and uh, yeah, nicely done figure here from Fans Toys. Uh, you know, the major issue is just the head popping off a little too easily, but you can do something about that. That is fixable, so hey, it does suck when you have to fix your toys right out of the box, but hey, as long as you can fix them, then hey, I'm not going to cry too much about it. It's the irreparable issues that I more so have a problem with. If it's something I can fix, I'm good. But overall, the robot mode looks good. The head mode looks really good also. Can't wait to see this entire giant behemoth of a bot when it's all put together. That's going to be crazy. But overall, I am pretty pleased with him. So there you go. Now I picked this up from agabus.com. I'll put a link to their site in the description down below so you can check them out. And of course, you can also get Transformers and third-party Transformers from BigBadToyStore.com. As always, linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. You can also check out my third-party Transformers playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. 
And I think that's it. So don't forget to check out End Games. Check out Love Peace Paranormal. Follow me on Twitter. All of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the Fans Toys Hannibal. And this is Emgo saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. Be a geek. Be proud. Boom in your face. Hey, Prime. Oh, Spike. Oh, listen, um, I hate to break it to you, but, um, I'm incorporating a new height rule here at the base. Height rule? Yeah, yeah, there's a height rule now, and you're just, uh, just a little too small to be a part of this team. <sighs> well, wait till the rest of me gets here. The rest of you? Hey. No. Uh, Spike? Kinda. Oh, another thing about the height rule. Um, you can't be as tall as me or taller. Pfft. Wait till the rest of me gets here. Wait, that's still not the rest of you?